Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Zach King from FinalCutKing.com. But boy, I gotta tell you, it's been quite the week. I, first of all, rode a speeder bike, as you can see here, and I, I you know, crashed. This thing is crazy. I crashed directly into a, a pond, but I'm not gonna show you this. You have to go to my uh, Final Cut King channel to watch this if you haven't already. So, And I also, in real life, no joke, got hit by a car on my bike. No, I wasn't riding the speeder bike, but I was riding my other bike. I'm into bicycling a little bit, and I'm actually taking a trip from San Fran to L.A. this next week, so I'm going to be gone. But don't worry, there'll still be videos coming out on the channel magically. So it's been quite the adrenaline junkie week for me, and now I'm sitting here recording this motion tutorial nice and relaxed. And I'm going to be showing you a cool effect. We're going to throw some paper textures in here. We're going to create some handwriting effects. We're going to have it animate on just like you see right here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go jump over to my website or click this link right here and download this texture for free just so you can follow along. We're going to go ahead and, and trim up this paper a little bit. Let's click our mask. We're going to go with a rectangle mask. Make sure you have your paper layer selected. And hold down shift when you do this and that will create a box just so you know. Or I'm not going to hold down shift. I'm going to hold down a rectangle and make a larger shape. This is going to be more of a title card. You could make a lower third right now. So right now what we're going to do is throw some text in, then we're going to do the handwriting effect, and at the very end we'll animate this group a little bit to give it a little bit of flavor, add a little light or something. But for now, throw in your text right down here. I'm going to say Zach King. We're going to open up the heads up display. If you don't have that open, it's right here. The HUD. Let's open up the size. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go with a nice little bluish color, make it a little darker. And then I'd like to change the blending mode to a color burn, something like that. So I might need to make it a darker blue. See, yeah, that's, that's good right here. And now what we do is you've always probably wanted to play with this little paintbrush down here and haven't had maybe a lot of reasons to do it. This is the time. So click it. The color brush does not even matter. In fact, I would make it an annoying orange color like this. Annoying orange color. So that you can uh, trace and see what you're doing. The tip here is to keep your basic solid as the shape style. So if you don't have that selected, maybe you have uh, one of these fun ones selected right here. Just click and come down to basic solid. It's a default. It'll be right here. Make sure you have right on checked and smoothing checked. And your width, this is the key. Your width needs to be bigger than your text. It needs to be able to hide it all. So if it's a little too big, it's okay, but try to get it right on. So something like this. By the way, I need to tell you what font I have. I've got the Chalk Duster, which I think is on all computers. If you don't have it, I'm sure you can find some other nice handwriting font. But uh, Chalk Duster, this font, see so how the letters are all separated? So I'm going to be creating a different paint stroke per letter. Since I've got eight letters in my name, I'm going to be doing eight paint stroke layers. and You'll see them up here, down here, and in your layers box. So with my paint tool selected, let's begin just tracing over the letters. Make sure you're covering it, and there, the Z is done. You're not going to see it because I've got right on selected. If I were to play, however, you'd see it do that. Now the writing effect I need to change the right on timing. If I click it, it's defaulted to a longer length. I need to click and drag it down. I'm going to make it pretty short, maybe uh, 12 or 13 frames long, so it just draws on real quick. We're going to need that change that length for all of them. We can do it in bulk in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and just do the writing stuff for now. So we're just going to hit A. We're going to hit C. H. K is actually going to have two swipes here. I'll include the dot and the I, N, and G. If you want, you can label them, hit enter, and go with this type of labeling so you can see what letters are what. In this case, I'm not going to continue doing this because it's going to take too long for you to watch. So Z, we timed it right. So let's select all the write-ons. What you can do is just hold down Command while you click and you select. And we're going to drag those down to a small length. We know what I said, 13 frames for all of them. 
Now if I play through, it all writes on very nice and neat, but it's all happening at the same time, and if I want the real handwriting effect, it would kind of go D, A, C, A, H, K, I, N, G. This is just about retiming, so we're going to drag the layers. Z stays at the beginning. A, I'm just going to guess, you know, 13 frames in. A can start. I don't have to make it exact. I can kind of guess and stair-step the effect and assume I'm kind of spacing it out right. Cool. So what we're going to do is go to the text group, right-click and go to Add Image Mask. You'll see that change the color of the text a little bit. Then you go to the handwriting effect, the group, and drag that inside the mask. You'll see what happens when we play. So now that I look at that, the color burn we did earlier won't apply because the image masks don't allow you to do the, the blending modes. So maybe you'd go through, I'd go to the inspector and actually change the color like a gradient so I, I'd get more of a contrast, but I would go to uh, fill with gradient, maybe a preset I've already done. I think there's one called like gospel green. Yeah, that's fine. So did a little switch up on you. If you need to go back and retime something, just go down here. It is a good idea to go through and label these, and then you can actually see what you're adjusting. And really quick, since I promised I'd show you how to animate it and add a quick little light, let's go ahead and do that. Object, new light, switch to 3D, say yes. And this light, let's throw the heads up display here so we can see. Let's bring up the intensity. We'll pull it back a little bit in 3D space. Something like this is cool maybe up towards the text more and let's actually select all of it and put it in one big main group we'll call it the big group we'll select everything here together put it in that big group we're gonna select the big group let's go to the beginning let's spin it down so it's flat we can't see it then I hit record We'll jump in. Uh, we'll make it short, just about 18 frames or so. Bring it back here, and you will see it animates on just like that. We want to make it smooth, however, so Command-8, right-click, Interpolation, Continuous. And so you'll see now it's just a nice smooth whoop, like that. If you want more motion training, I've got a lot of free stuff on my website, Final Cut King. Dot com. I also have some training courses you can download or stream online. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, comment below or write on my Facebook page or go there to my Facebook or Twitter and suggest new tutorial ideas. I'm always making new tutorials for you. I'll have a couple for Final Cut 10 coming out soon. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until next time, be good.